On March 31st, 2015, 80 mothers announced a hunger and work strike. They were undocumented migrants, imprisoned with their children, some for up to 10 months. They were held in the family detention center in Carnes, Texas. They were demanding freedom for their children and for themselves. The United States puts immigrants behind bars every day. They are locked up in a patchwork of government-run facilities, for-profit detention centers, and local jails. The vast majority of these immigrants are not criminals, but they are kept in conditions as brutal as those of any other prisoner, and they have fewer rights than if they were charged with a crime. There are currently over 34,000 people in immigration detention today. They sleep in dormitories, often so crowded they are forced to sleep on the floor. Their communications with the outside world are strictly limited. They're subjected to punishments like solitary confinement. Some detention centers are hundreds of miles away from the nearest city, making it nearly impossible for family members or lawyers to visit. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, also called ICE, can imprison an immigrant for months or years. Medical care is horrid, when it's provided at all. ICE officials admit that 141 people have died in their custody between 2003 and 2013. Jason Ning was a 34-year-old computer engineer born in China. He'd lived in New York for 17 years and had an American wife and kids. Ning was incarcerated when he showed up to a green card meeting in New York in July 2007. Then, Ning got sick. But the detention facility accused him of faking his pain, denied him treatment, and even dragged him in shackles to another detention center in another state to try to pressure him to accept deportation. A year later, he was dead from bone cancer. ICE locks up children, including infants. In 2014, the Obama administration began building additional family detention centers. 2,500 mothers and children are now in prison system-wide. Lawyers visiting a family detention center in Artesia, New Mexico, described terrible schooling, emaciated children, and outbreaks of pneumonia. The majority of these families were fleeing gang violence in Central America. People might think that those who are detained are all undocumented immigrants. They're wrong. Many are green card holders. They might have lived in America for decades with correct paperwork before being chucked into mandatory detention for a brush with the law so minor that, were they a citizen, they would never go to jail. In New York, you can be locked up and deported just for two convictions of subway turnstile jumping. This might seem unbelievable, but turnstile jumping is considered a quote-unquote crime of moral turpitude. Getting convicted of two minor infractions like this makes an immigrant deportable. Being deported is not a criminal proceeding. It's a civil one. But immigrants are treated more harshly than accused criminals without being given the basic rights a person in a criminal case is insured. Criminal defendants usually wear street clothes, but during their hearings, detained immigrants are brought to court in prison jumpsuits and shackles. Immigrants can be transferred between states without warning. They don't even have rights to a free lawyer. In fact, 58% of immigrants appearing in court have no representation at all. And the overwhelming majority of those who represent themselves lose their cases. Politicians love to bray that quote-unquote illegal aliens are bleeding America. But the real leeches are private prison companies who rake in billions in taxpayer money to ruin immigrants' lives including those with legal papers to live and work in the U.S. Congress requires ICE to keep 34,000 immigrants behind bars each night in order to keep its funding. But out of the 350 facilities it uses to incarcerate these immigrants, only eight are owned and operated by ICE itself. For the rest, ICE pays between $122 and $200 per person, per night, to for-profit corporations and to local jails. Last November, President Obama announced changes to his immigration policy, saying that they would focus on deporting felons, not families. But each night, 34,000 people languish in immigrant detention. Some are green card holders. Some are asylum seekers fleeing violence. Some are mothers. Some are children. They are behind bars, treated like criminals, even though by U.S. law, being an immigrant, undocumented or otherwise, is not a crime.